a cathedral first, then a mosque and later a museum. Now Istanbul's landmark Hagia Sophia is being reconverted back into a mosque. But is this an act of religious significance or political narrow-mindedness? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm Adrian Finnegan. One of the world's most famous landmarks, the Hagia Sophia Museum in Istanbul, has been turned back into a mosque. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says the site will be open to Muslim worship in less than two weeks after a top court ruled that the building's conversion into a museum in 1934 was illegal. Built one and a half thousand years ago as an Orthodox Christian cathedral, Hagia Sophia was converted into a mosque after the Ottoman conquest in 1453. While UNESCO and Greek, Russian and other church leaders have denounced Turkey's decision, its foreign ministry insists that it's a domestic issue of national sovereignty. We'll bring in our guests in just a moment. But first, a report from Altasira Sinem Kosiolu in Istanbul. Dozens celebrating conversion of Istanbul's iconic landmark Hagia Sophia back into a mosque through a much-awaited court decision. A dream Turkish Muslims have been chasing for 85 years. I'm very happy. I wish Hagia Sophia remains as a mosque until the judgment day. Hagia Sophia as a mosque is a legacy of Fatih Sultan Mehmet. We got it back. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan signed a presidential decree shortly after the country's highest court revoked the 1934 cabinet decision that turned the edifice into a museum. Like all our other mosques, the doors of Hagia Sophia will be open to all locals, foreigners, Muslims and non-Muslims. Being the common heritage of humankind, Hagia Sophia will continue to embrace everyone in a most sincere, unique way with its new status. Hagia Sophia is Turkey's most popular tourist site, attracting nearly 4 million visitors a year. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and part of the historic areas of Istanbul. The UN wants to make sure no changes are made to the structure. We deeply regret this decision made by the Turkish authorities, um, made without, without prior discussion and prior consultation, prior dialogue, and we call for the universal value of this splendid world heritage to be, uh, to be preserved. Um, the implications, indeed, have to be discussed uh, now, and this is why we call uh, on the Turkish authorities to re-establish the dialogue without delay. Immediately after Turkey's top administrative court ruled that Hagia Sophia will be a mosque again, Turkish people who have been waiting for a decision for years are here to celebrate, and they are impatient to have their first prayer inside. Hagia Sophia was built as a Christian Orthodox cathedral 1,500 years ago and was converted into a mosque after the Ottoman conquest in 1453. Turkey's decision has caused outrage in Greece and Russia, home to millions of Orthodox followers. Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew had earlier warned the decision would disappoint millions of Christians around the world. But President Erdogan says deciding the purpose of Hagia Sophia is Turkey's sovereign right. Sinem Kusulu, Al Jazeera, Istanbul. We'll start our discussion today with Ibrahim Kalin, who's a spokesman for Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. He joins us now from the presidential complex in Ankara. Good to have you with us, sir. Uh, is this political narrow-mindedness on behalf of, half of President Erdogan? Uh, he and his party have always argued that this is a matter of national sovereignty. How so? Why is this such an issue of national importance? has been uh, an important issue actually for the Turkish public for uh, for decades. Maybe some outsiders uh, have not been aware of this, but there has been an intense debate uh, about this. The question many people ask today, and they asked it in the past, uh, is why this place was turned into a museum in the first place. It served uh, as a mosque for 500 years. It became a symbol uh, of the city of Istanbul. It served as a, a place of worship, uh, but also as a, a beautiful uh, historical uh, cultural site and uh, it preserved its identity as such uh, for for many years christian icons and uh, 
uh, mosaics uh, and, and other descriptions have been preserved as part of the uh, Islamic tradition uh, uh, there. And, uh, you know, when uh, this issue came up from time to time uh, in the Turkish uh, public, uh, the question again was, uh, it should uh, be turned uh, into a mosque uh, because this was its uh, okay. proper function for uh, more than five centuries. But, but why now? You talk about the Turkish public here. Do ordinary Turks care right now about the reconversion of the Hagia Sophia when the economy is crumbling, when the country is dealing with a global pandemic? I mean, isn't this just an attempt to distract from policy failures and waning popular support for the president's party? Uh, not at all. I don't know where you get your facts from. Uh, our economy is not crumbling. Uh, we have handled the pandemic uh, much better than many other countries in Europe or the United States or some countries in Latin America. In fact, uh, we have done really, really well uh, dealing with the pandemic. And if you look at the support uh, for this move by not only the public, but also the political parties, including opposition political parties, you see that there is overwhelming consensus on this issue. You can look at the statements from the opposition political parties, including the Republican Party, since yesterday. They have supported this move. So there is really not such a, a big uh, fight uh, over this. Yes, there are some critics who have uh, raised concerns. And when I look at some of their uh, concerns, I see kind of two main issues. One is that it will not be available to all visitors from around the world. And the second one, this new move, will somehow shadow or damage its uh, cultural, historical uh, uh, site uh, quality. And uh, both are unfounded, uh, because the place uh, will remain open to all visitors, uh, believing, non-believing, Christian, Jewish, Hindu, Buddhist, or anyone who comes to Istanbul, and they're welcome to visit this place. So it will be open with all of its uh, frescoes and icons and, okay. and descriptions. There is no limitation uh, on that. And as far as uh, it's being a historical site uh, is concerned, uh, it can serve as a historical site, cultural site, in addition to being a mosque. You have many places like this. Notre Dame Cathedral, for example, in Paris is both a church okay. and also uh, a visiting place. The Blue Mosque in Istanbul uh, is a mosque, but also it's open to all visitors uh, uh, at, uh, at different times. So, okay. I mean, there is no contradiction between the two uh, uh, qualities. I, I, don't, I don't want to go uh, chasing down the line of, of the economy here because we're here to talk about the, the Hagia Sophia, but I mean, it is an established fact that, that Turkey's economy is, is, is not in the best of shape at the moment, and here we are facing, thanks to the pandemic, a, a global recession. The prospects are not particularly looking good. Does President Erdogan care about the international condemnation uh, due to his decision? As far as international relations are concerned, is this a decision that he will come to regret? Uh, no, not at all. In fact, uh, he made it very clear yesterday that we took this, this decision based on the will and demands of our people. And uh, we are making this place available to everyone. Uh, we are not limiting anyone from visiting this place, even though it is going to now function as a Muslim house of worship. It doesn't mean that non-Muslims will, uh, will not be able to enter it. As far as the international reaction is concerned, it's, it's interesting to think about that. Uh, secular Europe coming to... Uh, 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 this conclusion and raising this issue when a place is turned into a mosque, it's no longer a world historical heritage site. I mean, that, that, that assumption in itself is, is very, very questionable. Istanbul has, has always represented the coming together, if you like, the coexistence uh, of Islam and Christianity. What message does the president's decision send to the Orthodox Christian world when, when Orthodox Christian uh, leaders w were so against the decision uh, to, to return the, uh, the Hagia Sophia to, uh, to Muslim worship? We have a long established tradition of religious coexistence uh, in Turkey. Uh, we have uh, more than 400 churches and synagogues uh, open in Turkey. Uh, our non-Muslim uh, communities are free to uh, 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 worship uh, in their traditional ways, uh, Jews and Christians uh, and others, more traditional Christians like Syriac Christians, Orthodox Armenian Christians, Catholics and others, uh, they have their own religious institutions, uh, they have their own schools, and they are free to practice uh, their religion. So it doesn't really raise any questions about religious coexistence. Uh, Turkey is uh, heir to uh, many uh, empires and civilizations and culture cultures, and uh, we have been able to preserve that 
rich cultural tradition uh, for centuries, and we are determined to do so. The new status that Hagia Sophia will have as a mosque uh, does not in any way uh, take away anything from uh, its being uh, uh, part of this rich tradition. What uh, message does this send to, to President Erdogan's detractors at home and abroad? To what extent uh, does this reinforce the perception uh, that Turkey is not interested in abiding by international norms and institutions? It's, it's determined to act unilaterally. What international uh, institutions or uh, uh, conventions are there uh, to decide whether uh, Hagia Sophia should be a mosque or, or a museum? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm failing to understand your question there. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's... Uh, um, I can give you many examples uh, where different places of worship uh, have a function as a place of worship as well as visit. Uh, but if you're going to talk about international no norms and regulations, we should be talking about the rising tide of racism and Islamophobia, destruction of mosques uh, in Europe and other places. Even the, the mayor of Istanbul uh, is against this decision. Uh, uh, he got together a, a petition uh, to, to reverse the, the president's decision. How are you going to deal with that, with, with uh, uh, opposition within the country, within the city itself? Well, th that's an opposition within the opposition political party, actually. The party that the mayor belongs to has supported this move. We haven't uh, heard anything to the contrary. That's his personal choice. They will have to deal with it. All right, the decision has been made... For the moment, the, the president is riding on a, on a wave of positive uh, PR uh, domestically, thanks to this. What happens when, when that PR noise dies down in a few days or weeks? What happens when people return to debating the president's handling of, of the economy and the pandemic? As I said, we have handled the pandemic extremely well. I don't know how you arrive at that conclusion. I mean, you look at our numbers, uh, compare it with other countries, uh, we have protected our own people thanks to uh, our uh, health infrastructure and the decisions that our president has taken. Um, and now uh, we are opening up uh, to uh, get the economy back uh, uh, on track again, just like the rest of the world. But we have fared much better than many countries in Europe, such as Spain, uh, uh, Italy, uh, France, uh, or the United States or, or other countries. Of course, uh, there is global recession and everybody is taking their share uh, from it, uh, but uh, we have done extremely well uh, during the pandemic uh, uh, process. Finally, where does this decision leave the Turkish state's secular principles and the country's liberals? Well, as I said, uh, if secularism means that uh, the state protects all religious uh, communities and faiths, and this is exactly what the Turkish state has been doing, our religious minorities, uh, Jews and Christians, uh, are free to worship, uh, practice their religion. In fact, they have seen more freedom and acceptance and coexistence in the last um, almost two decades than uh, in any other uh, period uh, of our modern uh, history. If you, if you ask them, uh, the Christian and the Jewish communities here, uh, the properties that were confiscated in the past have been returned to them. They have their own churches. They appoint their own religious uh, leaders. Uh, they have uh, their own religious practices, uh, they have their places of worship, uh, and they are equal citizens uh, in the country. All right. Good to talk to you so many. Thanks indeed for being with us. Ibrahim Kalin, the spokesperson for Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. All right, so let's bring in our other guests for today's programme. Joining us from uh, Istanbul, we have uh, Mehmet Jelik who is the managing editor of the Turkish newspaper, The Daily Sabah. And from Washington, D.C., we have Mustafa Akyol, who's a senior fellow at the Cato Institute and author of the book Islam Without Extremes, A Muslim Case for Liberty. Uh, welcome to you both. Mustafa, let's uh, start with you. What did you make of, of what you heard there? I mean, Mr. Cullen is a voice of reason in a, a political landscape that is not always very reasonable. Uh, and, and I agree with most of the things he said. But there are a few nuances I would like to add. Um, I mean, if Hagia Sophia was just a mosque, it, if it was built as a mosque and if it only had the history of a mosque, nobody would have any problem, uh, should have any problem uh, in returning it from a museum, which would be a totally unjust decision, into, uh, back into a mosque, which is its original purpose. But of course, the complication is Hagia Sophia 
was built by Christians, served as a cathedral, the most important one for, for Eastern Christianity for a thousand years almost, then converted by the Ottoman Empire. Uh, and the legality of that, from an even Islamic point of view, can be discussed. Uh, they relied on the Hanafi law. There are different uh, perceptions on Islam, because we have in Islamic history cities conquered by Muslims like Jerusalem, in which uh, sh uh, Christian uh, churches were not converted, and they were preserved as such. Anyway, what happened uh, under Ottomans happened. And for their time, the Ottomans were a beacon of tolerance, uh, regardless of converting some big churches. And during the Republican era under Ataturk, this was, uh, Hagia Sophia was turned into a museum. Now I understand that I even share the offense of any religious believer seeing a place of worship turning into a museum. Who has the right to say that, to do that? And Turkey's secular past has other problems that Turkey's religious conservatives are rightly critical about, like bans on religious headscarves. Uh, and Turkey's secular past has not been very good for Christian or Jewish minorities as well. However, uh, when you revert back Hagia Sophia to worship, I'm, I've been arguing that we Muslims have a right here. We have the right to worship, especially in a Muslim-majority country. But we should honor also the Christian heritage. How? Uh, not just by saying, as a tourist, you can come and walk in, but you have a right to worship as well. So for, for, do that, for two decades, I'll argue that the building could be shared in terms of time and space between Muslims and Christians. At least Christians could All be right. given some spot to pray. Second, the most important thing right now is, uh, yes, there's Christian heritage, all the iconography, but as I understand, they will be covered somehow. I don't know the specifications. They have not been explained through curtains or through a light system. Uh, these are things that I've heard on the Turkish media. That will be seen, I think, by a lot of Christians as an insult to their heritage, as a as covering their heritage. And would we Muslims want to see that in the Balkans or somewhere else or in, in Spain? Uh, we wouldn't. And I think we should not do unto others okay. what we don't want to be done to us. All right. Uh, uh, Mehmet uh, Jelic in, in Istanbul, what did you make of, of what you heard from the president's uh, spokesperson there? Um, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says that any change to the building status would diminish its ability to serve humanity as a much-needed bridge between those of differing faith, traditions and cultures. He's right, isn't he? Well, uh, first of all, I would like to um, highlight a few points uh, that, uh, you know, comment on a few points uh, uh, on what Mustafa just said. Um, you know, he's, he asked whether we Muslims would be happy if we saw the same thing in the Balkans or, or in Spain. Unfortunately, we cannot see the same thing because the mosques have been destroyed uh, in the Balkans and uh, in Spain. Uh, having said that, I, I, one thing that I need to, I think we should all agree, regardless of uh, all the debates about its cultural value, historical value, religious symbol, symbolism, I think one thing that we all should agree on that uh, this decision is a is a matter of uh, domestic issue for Turkey as a sovereign state. Of course, we can be critical. Of course, we can uh, judge or 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 discuss it. Um, but with regards to uh, the decision uh, to be taken by the Turkish uh, authorities, the judicial authorities or exec executive authorities, I think we should agree that this is a decision that is is Turkish Turkish sovereign uh, right. Um, when it comes to the international uh, uh, arena, uh, particularly in, in the West, um, I think, it, it, you know, we, they, they, in a way, they think that right now, as, as of yesterday, the mosque, uh, the Hagia Sophia Museum was, a, uh, as of yesterday, it was a cathedral or it was a church, and now it is being actually returned back to, uh, uh, I mean, co being converted into a, a mosque. But this place has served as a place of, worship for the Muslims since 1453. And I think they should have no worry about uh, uh, whether it's uh, uh, icons or, 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 I mean, the symbolism inside the, the structure will be, uh, will okay. lose its meaning or dimish, be diminished because Turkish history does not have such examples uh, of uh, destroying such things as, uh, that have cultural okay. or historical or, or religious okay. value. So they right. will be preserved. Um, but, of course, it's a place of worship for the Muslims. Um, uh, and I cannot agree with, uh, as far as I know, with regards to uh, religious laws, uh, Hanafi, at least, religious laws. 
a place that has been converted to, into a mosque cannot serve as a as a as a church at the same time. Okay. I'm not a le I'm not a religious expert, right. but that's as far as but, I know. Uh, Mustafa, um, uh, what are the risks in this for for President Erdogan? First of all, I'd like to say one thing. Yes, Ottoman mosques, many Ottoman mosques have been destroyed in the Balkans by Serbian or Greek nationals or Bulgarian ones. Uh, but that's a shame. And, and we've protested that as Turks and Muslims. And we didn't say it's the national sovereignty of those countries. Okay. We said it is unfair. Turkey has not um, done that. There are some Turkey mosques remaining. Mustafa, Mustafa, gentlemen, the time, is very, time is very tight here. And I, there are a lot of things I want, want to discuss with you. And so and, and if you could stick to answering the question. Of Sophia as, as yeah. a, you know, any part of its structure. What are the risks in this, uh, Mustafa, for President Erdogan? Well, uh, domestically, it's a popular move, so I don't think domestically it will be a problem. But there might be international problems. And President Erdogan himself, a year ago, said that on TV. A year ago, he was actually denying that Hagia Sophia should be reopened as a mosque. And he said to an audience, I mean, and, and that's viral right now on Turkish Twitter, he said, if you do this, do you think what will happen to our mosques around the world? Um, so he was saying that we should not provoke nationalism while take, by taking a nationalist move uh, in, in our own country, nationalism against Muslims elsewhere. I fully agree with that, uh, President Erdogan's view on that. I don't know what has changed in a year. Uh, he just made a quick decision that it should be a mosque again. It will be popular. It will, I think, rally uh, his base. And uh, it, it is being supported by other parties. I'm not denying that. But the question is... Turkey has power. Turkey has the right to do this. That's fine. Okay. But what what kind of a message are we giving to the world? And as a Turk myself, yeah. I think we sh we could have given a better message. Uh, Mehmet, what what will be the impact on on relations between Turkey and Greece, for example? Uh, uh, to what extent is is Greek displeasure exactly what the president's decision was designed to provoke? I think I think Greece display. I mean, I, it is totally understandable, and I mean, it's we cannot discuss why Greece is bothered by this. We shouldn't even be discussed because I mean, it's histori There is historical uh, uh, baggage that comes with the whole this whole issue. Um, but I think what Greece should look into is well, how come you know Athens is the only uh, Greek uh, uh, European capital without a mosque. Uh, what happened to all the mosques in, in Athens? That's something that we should be discussing to actually establish relations between Turkey and Greece on a, on a you know, a more tolerant way. Um, of course, Greece and Turkey, they have, uh, a, you know, relations that are uh, back and forth all the time with historical baggage, with regional dynamics, and with, of course, having been two neighbors that rely on uh, shared resources. So... This issue will, yes, it will, it may put a dent on Turkey-Greece relations, but I think there is more foundational uh, uh, issues between Turkey and Greece in 2020 that needs to be discussed to overcome such uh, uh, such rivalry or such enmity between the two states. Mustafa, I've got about I've got about a minute or, or less here. Um, uh, to what extent does this decision, picking up on on what you were just saying, to what extent does this decision damage Islam's reputation? Uh, or image in the rest of the world? Does it matter what anyone thinks outside of Islam? I think it does. Uh, we Muslims uh, have national sovereignty. We deserve power. But I think we should show uh, virtue in the name of our faith. And I think one of the strongest virtues of Islam has been pluralism, tolerance, and, and respecting other faiths. Uh, if we rather emphasize as conquest, which is a part of our history, but something maybe not that relevant today, I think we will not be doing a service to our faith. So uh, I'm happy a lot of million, a lot of people, Muslims, will worship in Hagia Sophia. I look forward to doing that myself. But I wish uh, to see that Christians, will, when come to the building, they will see their heritage, and they might even have a spot for prayer, which is still not impossible. All right. Gentlemen, many thanks indeed. Good to talk to you. Mehmet Jelik there in uh, Istanbul, Mustafa Akil in Washington, D.C. Thank you, as always, for watching. Don't forget you can see the program again at any time just by going to the website, aljazeera.com. For further discussion, join us at our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can join the conversation on Twitter, our handle, at AJ Inside Story. From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the whole team here in Doha, thanks for watching. I'll see you again. Bye for now.